This is a short video about uh, what it means to be a closed set in a topological space. So uh, the setting that we've got is we've got some set X and it's got a topology T. And uh, what I want to remind you of, first of all, you know, what are the things in T here? These are the sets that we're going to call open. Sets we call open. Um, and so, you know, to give you an example, if uh, X is, you guessed it, one, two, three, let's say that T is, uh, let's see, what's one that'll work? Empty X, okay, that's the easy part. Now let's just do one, and let's do um, about one, two, that's fine. Uh, in this case, that's my topology there. I think that works right, I think I get everything in there. Um, what I'm saying to you is, these are just a bunch of subsets of X, and these are the things that I'm gonna describe as open. I don't know why I'm using green now. In fact, that's bothering me. I'm gonna change it to red. Sorry about thinking about loud there. We'll call these open, and that's it, you know? And so it's just this adjective that I'm using to describe these particular sets. Um, what we're gonna do now is define a new concept that's called closed. And so let's say my set um, C is closed. Maybe also I should say it this way. Where does C live? So I'm assuming C is a subset of this X that I've already defined. So we say C uh, subset of X is closed if its complement is open. Or another way to say that, if it's the complement of an open set. So if, so the way that we're gonna write complement is X minus C. And so this, this notation is called set difference. Um, if you've taken a statistics class, not, not like a graduate one, but even just like a, an undergrad kind of regular basic statistics class, there's a good chance you talked about like events and uh, the complement of an event, remember, is like, what's the stuff that can't happen? What's the stuff that falls out of your event? So to give you like a quick example, flip a coin, it's heads or tails. The complement of heads would be tails. So it's this other possibilities that just aren't in the event that you're talking about. And so another way that you might see this is, uh, this is kind of bad. I'm gonna use C, but with like a superscript or a power looking thing of a C that means complement. You can use that if you want in my class, but uh, the book is gonna use this notation, so that's what I'll stick to. Set, that's supposed to say difference. Sorry about that. Another way to write it is instead of using like a straight up minus sign, people do like a slash like this. That's the same thing. I don't have a preference. Um, so C subset of X is called closed, just if its complement is open. Another way to think about that though, if you already have the topology here, you know the open sets, thus you know the closed sets as well. And so to give you an example, if we look at my T above, uh, the closed sets in the above example would be just take the complement one by one of each of these things and you've got the closed ones. So the closed sets in the above example are, if you take the complement of the empty set, you get X itself, right? Cause that's a, uh, yeah, X minus empty would be X. If you take the complement of X, that would be X minus X, so that's empty. So that tells me something there. This says that the empty set and the whole set are open, but you just also told me that the whole set and the empty set are closed. So that's something special. So the whole set and the empty set are these two crazy extremes that are simultaneously open and closed. And now what else could we do? The complement of one in my set X, one, two, three here would be, well, what's the stuff that's in X that's not one? Well, you have two, three left. So two, three is closed. And then similarly here, the complement of one, two in this set X, in other words, if you deleted one and two, you'd still have three left. So three is closed. And so those are the closed sets in this uh, topological space. Hope that makes sense how we constructed those. Um, you know, to give you another example from like, say college algebra, if I have the usual topology on the real line, um, what we're used to, we love these open intervals from A to B. That's definitely an open set. And now what else could I think about? What would a closed set be? Well, a closed set would be brackets from A to B. And so how come? So this is open whereas this is closed now. And what I wanted to say is why. So the point is, why should this be closed? That means that its complement should be an open set. And so to convince you of that, 
what is the complement of this interval from A to B? I'll use this color now. Uh, the complement would be everything to the left and to the right. So this interval, not including A, and this interval, not including A. So what is that? That's minus infinity to A union of E to infinity. And then these are each open. And then I know that the union of any number of open things is also open. So what I'm trying to convince you of is that the orange is the complement of the obnoxious neon green. So the orange is closed. I hope that that makes sense. Um, let's see. So what are some other things that I know about opens? And what are some of the kind of dual things that I can say about closed? So this is a theorem and we'll kind of collect it all. Maybe I want to say, I'll go to a new page down here. Um, I want to kind of some facts about opens, about opens, and I want to tell you the dual facts about closed. Facts about maybe open sets, I'll be a little more precise. Facts about closed sets. And so, um, let's see, open sets. Well, X empty, always open. And what we said above in our example, uh, X empty, also always closed. Um, well, I guess that's number one. Uh, what else do I know about open sets? And where am I getting this still on the left from? I'm getting these from the axioms of the topology. So the, maybe I'll write it this way. If, uh, let's say A, fancy A, is any index set. Um, and let's say that U alpha is in my topology T. So in other words, U alpha is open for all alpha in your index set here. So like, what's your common index set? Like the natural number, say one, two, three onward. But we might see later on, you can use different index sets. Like you can kind of uh, enumerate or, or like count things, not just based on the natural numbers, but if that's your intuition, that's totally fine for right now. So my point then is that I don't care how many of these opens you have, the union of them is also open. So then union for, I think our book likes to write it this way, U alpha, where alpha is in your index set, is in T. And again, when I say is in T, I mean is open. Union of opens is always open. I wanna write that below it. Union of opens is open. And then maybe the third thing that I wanna write down is intersections for opens is not as nice. You can only intersect finitely many things at a time. And so maybe I'll just write that in words. So the intersection of a finite number of opens is still open. But you've gotta be careful when intersecting uh, infinitely many opens at a time. You don't necessarily get something that's open. I'll say more about that later. Now, those are some facts about opens that we kind of know and love. What are some of the dual things about closed? And so you can get these things from using De Morgan's laws, if you remember those from uh, one of the homework assignments, say. But uh, what I want to think about this or just kind of focus on is, oh, how do closed sets uh, interact with stuff like unions and stuff like intersections? And so uh, similarly here, if say A is any index set, let's say C alpha is closed for all alpha and A. And you probably think I'm gonna write down a union, but in fact, you can take any intersection of closed sets and still guarantee that it's closed. So C alpha, alpha and A is closed. So just again, parenthetically, uh, intersection of closed is closed. Cool, and any number, you can intersect any amount at a time. So any union of opens is open, and similarly, any intersection of closed are closed. And then finally down here, closed sets don't play as nicely with unions. So we can only guarantee that the union of um, a finite number of closed sets uh, is closed. So again, those things really come from the Morgan's laws. Um, so like these two correspond to each other with the Morgan's laws. And that might be a good exercise too to try to prove both of those if you 
he wanted more to do. Um, let's see. Maybe just because it's a good example, say, just to remind you, you know, how to just to go back to that. Now that I've got the idea of what closed is, the intersection of a finite number of uh, opens is still open, but why not infinitely many things? Maybe just for example now, uh, what can I try to convince you of? If you've got the real numbers, is your set X? I'll write it this way, not that it matters, but X is the real numbers, T is the usual topology. Um, then, you know, if you've got this fella named A right here, then A is the complement of minus infinity to A union A to infinity. So this is open. So what does that tell me? That tells me it's complement to singleton A is closed. All right, that's pretty interesting. And now what I want to look at here, now that uh, we're all on the same page about that, I hope, what if you took the intersection for all n and n of, let's say, um, you know, minus one over n plus a to uh, one over n plus a. So what am I getting at there? What do all these things look like? And so I'll draw that for you. So here is uh, this picture and let's say here's a. So like here, we're going one, when n is one, you're going one unit to the left and when n is one, you're going one unit to the right. So like the first interval we're gonna look at maybe goes here to a minus one and here to a plus one. And then now we're gonna look at when n is two. So now we're gonna go one half to the left of a and one half to the right of a. So that interval maybe looks like this. It's a little bit smaller. And now what we're doing is we're gonna keep doing that. And we're gonna keep making these intervals. They get smaller and smaller and smaller around a. And what does this say to look at? This says to look at where they all overlap at. So if you kind of envision where do these all start to overlap at, the only thing that is in every single one of these intervals as they get smaller and smaller and smaller here, is just this point A itself. And uh, maybe I'll use this color up here, just that point A itself. So what is this equal to? It is just equal to the singleton A. So what did I just show you? The intersection of more than just a handful of opens is not necessarily open. So that's why, if you haven't seen it before, you really need to be careful with that third axiom of what, uh, what constitutes a topology. And now that we know um, what closed means, I hope that this example makes a little more sense.